specialize in organizational <coughs> behavior and my research falls more or less under the umbrella of organizational behavior, Islamic management and leadership. But I would not be talking about any of that in this conference. So he was a bit worried. John, why not? I said, see, we are doing research. We will continue to do research in those areas. But there are a few other things that we really need to focus. And that is to really understand where the future lies. I think you all must have heard. Uh, in fact, you must have read in a lot of newspapers. Uh, you must have seen a lot of videos, a lot of CEOs, you know, discussing more or less a term which is called like soft skills. This is something that has really been picking up. So I requested uh, Mr. Kurshad that let me speak and let me discuss something which is coming very significant in the coming years ahead. And that is that how can we teach soft skills for a better sustainable future for our students, for our <coughs> employees and so forth. I mean, this is no news for any of us, especially who comes, I mean, as since we all are coming from the field of economics and business, that today's business organizations operate in a very challenging uh, environment where competition is not only cutthroat, but it is becoming extreme. I mean, this is something which is no news. We know about it. Now, if you look at the business leaders, CEOs, managers, and directors, you know, they have continuously been asserting that university graduates are to be well versed and they're supposed to be fully prepared to tackle the challenges and the issues or the problems that exist in the real world of business. Now, keeping that in mind, if I go back and I see there are a number of recent surveys that have been published, not only by some very well renowned research houses, but even by universities, including like Stanford, Harvard, and even Columbia, where they say that graduates, and especially graduates, when I talk about graduates, I'm talking about all graduates from all fields, that they're really not prepared for the real world. I mean, that is something very astonishing, staggering as well, that why are they not prepared? Now, on the other hand, they also say, based on, you could say, the research findings that we have, that business leaders and managers, they confirm that almost 58% of university graduates seriously need to improve their skills for being successful in the entry level positions. Now that is something which again is very, very serious. 58%. I mean, since we all believe in numbers and percentages, so let's look at the percentage. 58% is a very high number. I mean, we also have reports. If we look at CIA Factbook report or World Bank or IMF reports, that they say that graduates are required to improve their skill set and knowledge base if they really want to excel in their careers. And this is something that we need to focus as academicians, as scholars, as researchers, that what do we need to do? And even as universities and institutions. So if we go back to the business world, we see that employers are asserting that universities need to do more to ensure that graduates are ready and they're up for the challenge. What concerns most at the present are projections that predict that artificial intelligence, all right, I think we have all heard about AI, and AI has become more like the selling thing these days, all right? So artificial intelligence, which will allow machines and robots to replace millions of jobs in the next few decades, and when I refer decades, it means like 10 to 15 years. So much so, I mean, since we are we're going to be replacing those jobs with machines and robots, the McKinsey, their report says that there are a number of, I mean, based on their report, they basically came up with a number of scenarios which signify that nearly 30%, all right, or more likely about 15% of the current work would be automated by 2030. So it won't be surprising for any of us to know that this would potentially have an impact on 800 million workers working globally. So 800 million is a big number. And if we are addressing this issue today, and especially at this forum, uh, I would like to quote one of the statements that was recently given by the CEO of Alibaba Jack Ma in Economic Forum in 2019, where he clearly asserted that do not teach knowledge base 
on things from the past 200 years. All right. Education for sure is a big challenge at present and if we do not amend the way we teach, we will be in big trouble in the next 15 to 30 years from now. The objective or the idea is to teach students values, believing in themselves, independent thinking, teamwork, care for others and so forth. In short, Jack Ma said that the focus of today's education system should be improving the overall soft skills of the students. All right, now that's something which changes the entire dynamics and paradigm of how we operate currently. So in context to what I've argued, uh, one may agree, I mean, you have all the right to disagree with me on this, but we may agree with the given argument that, there's a, that this is something which is happening. And to look at it a little bit more closely, we have a good number of research that basically supports the belief that hard skills are something that are teachable, all right? They may be learned and developed through self-study, work experience, and education or training. Now, importantly, these skills are more industry specific and vary from job to job. For instance, having expertise in econometrics, wireless engineering, or you could say programming, computing. Uh, you could talk about nursing and uh, sociological skills and so forth. Now, though I'm not saying, and neither am I advocating that it's only soft skills that are supposed to be taught, hard skills are of great significance. I mean, they have a major validity. But what I'm trying to make my point here is that yes, skill, these skills are vital, to execute a particular job and but the absence of soft skills can be a key limitation for future workers that we are trying to prepare for the business world as being business faculty all right so i would like to endorse this theory that i've just presented by a recent study that was conducted at stanford university where they showcase that 75% of success in long term depends upon the soft skill, only 25% depends upon hard skills. So ladies and gentlemen, this is something that we as researchers, as academicians need to thoroughly look into. Now, of course, the question comes in that what do we need to do? We need to improve employability, employability of our graduates, of our students who are eventually going to be a part of the main workforce. Now, we see in universities worldwide that they are increasing a number of courses that primarily focus on improving soft skills. Generally, the program offered uh, have the emphasis on critical thinking, problem solving, communication skills, foreign languages, conflict resolution, work ethics, social responsibility, teamwork, creativity, innovation. I mean, if we look at university professors, they do acknowledge that some soft skills are best grown and refined, you know, among, I mean, outside the walls of academia, especially when they go to the workplace and they start working. I mean, I would like to quote over here, especially with reference to some of the Australian universities, that they encourage students to sign up for extra credit points by serving on student council, faculty student advisory board, or volunteering in community services. I happen to be traveling very frequently to China and especially looking at Beijing University and some other universities, including in Shanghai. What I have noticed is that even Chinese universities are also offering innovative and enterprise education programs, which include simulation. Uh, they have a number of simulation courses, especially in the field of economics, finance, and even MIS. Business plan competitions, which you guys are also working and focusing on as a platform, in creators platform, and a business incubator or science parks. So in addition to improving hard skills, soft skills training is offered to encourage competencies in foreign languages, communication skills, critical thinking and analysis, creativity, and understanding culture and other countries. So this has become a very common practice if we look at some of the finest universities in Australia, in China, and even in New Zealand, or so forth in Canada or US, all right? But, uh, 
I'm not saying that these practical approaches to soft skill teaching seems logical or and appropriate, but what I'm trying to make my point over here is that since we are witnessing a changing philosophy around us, we still are at that stage as academicians where we cannot even define what is really soft skills. So for those who eventually are going to be looking at some potential areas of research, this is again an area that one needs to think of on that we are still not in the pro I mean we still not have defined as what really soft skills are. We need to have a consensus on that as academicians, as universities, all right, or as those who are dealing with the future workforce. Now, I must say that these, I mean, there are a number of courses, area of courses that the universities are offering, but these courses and programs are being offered without any agreement on truly understanding the precise nature of what really soft skills are, how can they be fostered, in the given training courses. Now, I would also like to add that based on the existing research findings, one can carefully state that it is challenging to accurately define soft skills first, all right? And then in practice, we need to incorporate in our teaching methodology, in our research philosophy, as well as in our day-to-day -day dealing or bridging the gap between the industry and the university. university. So, I would like to, in the end, say that soft skills pertaining to self-esteem, self-confidence, integrity, and ethics can only be acquired through self-realization and an act that most researchers believe is currently beyond the reach of generic education strategies. So I would like to end by saying that universities are teaching uh, conventional soft skills, but no one seems to be addressing the higher level human qualities that are important for moving ahead of machines. So with this, I would like to again thank you, the InTraders platform, for providing me this opportunity and discussing something that I have been very actively writing in Daily Sabha and other places. And I hope that in future and in your upcoming conference, we can have a complete session, at least a workshop, where we as academicians can sit together and can finalize or try to finalize something that we can incorporate John, in our overall teaching methodology and philosophy. So once again, thank you very much. I again welcome you to this particular conference and I wish you all the very best for the next two days. Hope you will enjoy Sakarya as what the rector has stated. And if you happen to pass by Istanbul, please feel free to visit us at Medipol. I have two of my very senior colleagues sitting right here in the audience. So thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you.